Good evening, everyone. We're about to get started. And let me personally thank you for coming out uh, uh, this evening when you could be doing so many other things. And that light over there is blinding. Is there any way it could be turned? Just these two lights are coming in, and I'm not going to be able to see. Thank you very much. Did they dim them a little bit? <laughs> That's what they did. OK, because I, I couldn't see. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, that Ms. Williams, Margaret Williams, come and give us uh, the invocation. And then we will have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Good evening. I'm going to ask that you go ahead and stand to your feet, please. Bow your heads and your hearts. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the time that you've allowed us to come together. We ask tonight that you be with our city leaders as our mayor presents to this community the state of the city. We thank you for your blessings on this community. We thank you how you've kept your hand upon us. You've kept us safe from all hurt and harm, from all danger seen and unseen. We ask, Lord God, that you continue to bless our leadership, bless those who work in the city, bless all of our city department heads, bless our city manager as she continues to carry out the vision of this council. We ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> I have to laugh at myself because at noon today I was in a meeting with about 40 ministers, and I could have asked one of them to come in here and uh, give us the prayer this evening, but she's always ready, and we appreciate her uh, coming up here. We have many ministers that are on the podium that uh, we could have called on, but Margaret uh, is one of our staffers here uh, with the city of Savannah. As you know, tonight I will be presenting to you the State of the City's Address. This is all that we're going to do this evening. We're only going to have, if you notice, there will be no questions and answers at this time. That will be done at a later date. And what I encourage you to do is to get with your alderman. But before I get started, let me see if there are any other elected officials that may be in the audience at this time so I can recognize you. Commissioner Shabazz. We're Commissioner. Uh, Center. Center. Commissioner Center, Commissioner Shabazz, where is he? Oh, okay. I told y'all the light is blinding. Um, uh, are there any former elected officials in the building? Will you please stand and be recognized? Who's that? Pat Shea. Uh, Commissioner Pat Shea. <laughs> and the reason I have to ask is because that light won't allow me to see. So um, it's not, uh, Pat, that I don't know you. It's just that I can't see it, you know, the glare from it. No. Let, okay, <laughs> thank you. Is there anybody else I need to recognize? Okay. Hmm. You see anybody else? Okay. Let me also recognize our, the presidents of our neighborhood associations. Will you please stand? Thank you very much. You may be seated. Let's give all of them a round of applause, please. At this time, I would like to, to introduce, and I know, well, I'm just going to present to all of you, because you know everybody that is on the dais. You, it's your elected officials. Let me first introduce our Mayor Pro Tem Van Johnson, our, that's good, you clap. <laughs> Our Chair of Council, Tony Thomas, and also 5th District Alderman, our 6th District, oh, um, Estelle, I gave him your district, 6th District, uh, Alderman Mary Osborne, who is also our Vice Chair of Council, 2nd District, the Mighty 2nd, 
Um, and then we have the at-large, Carol Bell, that is sitting on this end. Okay. Alderman from the 4th District, Mary Ellen Sprague. Alderman from my district, John Hall. Third, that's third, y'all. And Alderman for, from the 5th District, Estella Shabazz. Let me also introduce our city manager, our city manager, our city manager, Stephanie Cutter. Our city attorney, Brooke Stillwell. Our clerk of council, Diane Reese. And her assistant, Tawana, that is sitting, <laughs> Tawana Crawford. I just also recognize someone else, the director of our housing authority. Will you please stand? Can get a name. <laughs> Earlene, thank you for coming out today as well. So I think I've taken care of all of the protocol, but the most in people, all of the city department heads, for the city of Savannah, please raise your hands wherever you are standi standing and please stand wherever you are sitting. <laughs> <laughs> and if there are other department heads from other areas, the county, the school board, if you will be recognized as well. The reason this is important is because we are all in this boat together and we should work together as a team. That is most important. But you know who the most important people in this room this evening? It's you. Because you are the residents. Without you, we cannot be successful. We have a group of young people that are here today. We have the Youth Council as well as the Chatham County Youth Commission. Y'all stand up. What is so, thank you, what is so, you may be seated, what is so important, and these are under um, uh, uh, Lita and, not Lita, Carlos, Carlos and Van Johnson. Uh, Van works with both groups, but guess what? They work together. The county, we can learn some lessons sometime from the young people, am I correct? Okay. So at this time, it is my time to bring to you the State of the City's address. God, that light. <laughs> Who has that light up there? It's a, I guess this thing is being sent through one of the TV stations as well, so maybe they have. If you see me uh, make an error or something, put it on the light, okay? <laughs> Members of City Council, Madam City Manager, our city staff, involved citizens of the great city of Savannah, it is an honor for me to be before you this evening. Tonight the City Council speaks with one voice to the people we represent. It is you, our citizens, who make the state of our city strong. Last year, in Savannah, a 17-year-old Savannah Arts Academy student named Paula Small rose every morning at 5 and didn't lay down until 11 at night to maintain a 4.0 grade point average and fit in a full day of honors classes, club activities, and piano, clarinet, and violin lessons. For her efforts, she was named the 2014 Distinguished Young Woman of Savannah. <laughs> last, last year in Savannah, Johnny and Gabrielle DeBeer saw years of hard work at their tiny York Street sandwich shop pay off when they added a second restaurant downtown and saw the Travel Channel 
named their chicken sandwich, and I want one, one of the best in the entire country. Are they here this evening? Last year, Tony and Vita Jordan once again change the lives of dozens of local teens by teaching them the power of artistic expression through their remarkable all walks of life. Last year, Greg Parker opened his 35th convenience store, recorded half a billion dollars in sales, and was placed on Inc.'s magazine list of 5,000 fastest growing companies in America. Savannah has always produced more success stories than a town our size anywhere in this country. Thinking different is our DNA. From General Oglethorpe and his world-famous town plan to Eli Whitney and his cotton gym. From Moses Rogers and his historic steamship crossing of the Atlantic to Juliet Lowe and her Girl Scouts of America. From W.W. W. Law leading Savannah through the civil rights to Floyd Adams making history in City Hall. Savannah's strength is Savannah's people. For five years, we gritted our way through a great recession, a great, the Great Recession. We took our hits, yes, but we refused to call it quits. Our businesses, our businesses huddled down and got lean. Our workers learned new skills and Savannah refocused. That's why I believe this can be the breakthrough year for Savannah. We're stronger now than we were five years ago. You, the people of Savannah, are stronger, and we're stronger because of you. Last year, 726 new business fi filed in Savannah, the most ever. Last year, 12.4 million tourists visited Savannah, the most ever. Last year, we saw more construction than any time in our history. Last year, we issued five times as many commercial buildings permits as we did in 2009. This is a different economy than we had prior to the recession. Five years ago, residential building outpaced commercial construction by a two to one margin. Today, it's reversed. You know what? That sounds to me like jobs. We're building more businesses. We're adding more jobs. Gulfstream alone has added 2,500 jobs over the past <coughs> three years, with plans to hire another thousand this year alone. We need more jobs. Go out to Gulfstream, y'all. <laughs> the city, the city needs to do everything we can to encourage job creation. We have done our part to keep taxes low. Last year, Despite the $4 million reduction in sales tax revenue, this city council refused to take the easy road and increase property taxes and make up the difference, even though the cost of everything continued to rise. Our property tax rate is 30% below where it was 20 years ago. City Council this month passed a resolution in support of eliminating, elimination of the inventory tax imposed on manufacturing companies. We've heard from some business owners that we're not awarding enough contracts to minorities and women-owned businesses. 
On last week, maybe two weeks ago, I held a forum here in this room, invited the members, contractors of M MWBEs to come and to meet with us so that we could talk about how we could strengthen what we do with them. Council and I want the city to do everything it can to increase opportunities for all. But let me make it clear, the city will not bend the rules. We owe it to our taxpayers to get the best value for every contract. Our process will be open, fair, and transparent to all. This council is not satisfied that the city is doing enough to do more business with local vendors. These businesses are paying taxes in our community. We will follow the laws, and local firms must compete. We want you to compete. But they should not lose out to a firm from New York if their price is a few hundred dollars below the local bid. I've asked our city manager to explore new ways to strengthen our local vendors' preference. We will do anything and everything to make Savannah even more attractive to companies looking to relocate to our community. We will continue to work with agencies like CETA, the Chamber, World Trade Centers, and others to get companies to locate in this community. The city has a program called Workforce Services, which uses federal dollars to send unemployed residents to Georgia Tech to get trained for jobs that are hiring in our community. Savannah Tech has done a wonderful job working with our local employers to determine their needs. If any industry need more turbine mechanics, they, they will train more turbine mechanics and in other areas where the needs are. Armstrong State and Savannah State University are doing a tremendous job in preparing our young people for the demands of the modern workplace. At this time, I saw Dr. Dozier. I recognize you, the president of Savannah State University. Thank you for coming. <laughs> the city, five years ago, opened a new facility in West Savannah called the Moses Jackson Advancement Center. Walk in the door and you can take yoga class, culinary class, computer class, or even certification in warehousing, commercial driving, or medical administration. Folks, these are jobs that are hiring today. Moses Jackson has been so successful on the west side that we're adding a similar facility on the east side. In November, you as voters approved a $7 million SPLOS for our new neighborhood resource center next to the new Savannah Gardens community. We're a building off of Pennsylvania Avenue. Have y'all seen Savannah Gardens? Isn't it beautiful? That is partnering, partnering with public housing, partnering with partners and others. I think we all feel that people deserve to live in decent housing, and Savannah can tell the story on that. We're not giving a handout. We're giving our residents the tools they need to help themselves, not just to get a job, but to have a career. We have an entrepreneurial center 
that every day help Savannians focus their big dreams into workable business plans. Last year, the center served 684 clients. These people are not looking to get rich quick, but probably waiting to get rich though. They're just looking for an opportunity to work hard to support their family. That's the American dream. So far, far so long, too long, have I heard stories that the city of Savannah is not friendly to business. Last year, I convened two committees, two round tables. One focused on small businesses, the other on the development community to tell us how we as a city can do better. We had key business leaders, Alderman Van Johnson and Cara Bell, along with the staff, worked hand in hand with these two committees. In the end, they produced two reports recommending a number of changes. We've already revamped our development process and are using new technology to make it clearer and, quick, and easier and quicker to get a building permit. Next up, to streamlining our business permitting process. It should be easier to open a business in Savannah than it is. And we need to do more to support business startups. Our goal is for the world to know that the best place in the nation for business startup, and I want them to call, and I want to be able to say that we are Startup City USA. With our famous quality of life, thriving downtown, growing residential neighborhoods, strong universities, and growing creative classes, there is no reason why we shouldn't compete with cities such as Austin, Texas, and Boulder, Colorado. There is no reason we should aim big in this community because, folks, you make us big. I've done traveling across the world in recent years, and let me tell you, you don't have to tell anyone where the old Savannah is anymore. From China to New York, from Israel to Turkey, people get excited when all of us let them know that we are from the hostess city of the South. As residents, we need to recognize that we live in a truly unique place. Savannah is a jewel. It is our responsibility to respect it and take care of it for future generations. That means being better stewards of our environment. We are taking steps to preserve, to preserve our aquifer, which, is, which for three generations, centuries, has been Savannah's main source of drinking water. Today, the aquifer is threatening like never before due to overuse. In recent years, the city of Savannah has expanded our water reuse program, recycles waste water for irrigation. Today, big water users such as Savannah Golf Course and the Western use reclaim water wastewater on their grass. Last year, City Council approved an engineering contract that expand the system into Bacon Park. When active, it will save more than a million gallons of drinking water a day. 30 years ago, Savannah pumped 80 million gallons of water a day from the aquifer. Today, we use just 23 gallons of water. 
Now that is really conservation. I'm proud that Savannah was the first jurisdiction in the region to develop a, a single stream curbside recycling program. Because of it, we have avoided burying more than 80 million pounds of trash in our landfill. Last year, curbside recycling participation jumped nearly 30% in our community. Give yourselves a hand. Savannah does recycle, but we can do better. Savannah City Council has endorsed the city manager's creation of a new office of sustainability to make us an even greener community. Citizens, we live in the most beautiful city in America. And yet every time I walk down the street, and I know you too, I see litter everywhere. I'm tired of seeing drivers and riders throwing their garbage or their trash out of the windows of their cars when they get to the stoplight. I was down on River Street on Sunday, and it is appalling to see the cigarette butts that are on our streets. And we have containers, but they're not being used. We have containers, but they are not being used. I'm proud to say that Greg Parker has agreed to partner with the city and help fund, fund, F-U-N-D, a campaign to reduce the amount of litter in our community. We need, <laughs> we need a change in attitude. Our residents need to understand that littering is wrong. And let this be a warning. Littering is also against the law. And if you are caught doing it, you can go to jail. Am I right, Greg Parker? Y'all recognize Greg Parker, please. And the only, re the only reason I, I knew he was out there, because it lights in my eye, I heard his voice. Greg, thank you for all that you do. I know, I'm, I know our young people want to become part of Savannah's solution. You want to know how I know that? Last year, downstairs, in the arena, because this room would not hold them, we had more than 500 teenagers attend the Youth Summit. And this activity was organized with the help of the Youth Council and the Youth Commission. They are on a mission. <laughs> young people, thank you and continue what you do. The young people talked about crime and the lack of opportunity and the things they wish our community had. They told us they needed more places to keep kids off the street. We have 14 community centers in Savannah. We must use them to provide services for our youth, our adults, and our senior citizens. We need churches, civic organizations, and other partners to help run programs in these centers. We're talking about volunteerism, especially programs for our youth, for there is a need for mentoring. Can we depend on you to get involved? Can we depend on you? Y'all are very quiet tonight. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, we did a follow-up with the Youth Summit, where State Representative Calvin Smarrick spoke. It was wonderful. There were over 200 young people 
at a breakfast and that we asked, do y'all want more? And they said, yes. And we're committed to giving them more, to exposing them to not just local leaders, but leaders across the state and across this nation. We're using all of their input and creating a youth master plan for our community. It is under the guidance of Van Johnson and Collis Bates that we will be doing this. Let's give this Collis here. The voices of our young people are being heard like never before. They are our future. Allow me to mention four initiatives that are key to the future they will live in. Number one, the Canal District, the centerpiece of the SPLOS plan that you approved in November is construction of a new $120 million arena to replace our 40, this one, year old facility. We're building a new arena on a huge piece of land that we own, property on the west side. We have developed, we are developing a plan that will connect this community with the residents of the west side and the rest of downtown through a series of new roads, walkways, historic canal features. This will serve as a catalyst for development of the entire west side, and it will expand throughout this community. Number two, support the arts. Art today is big business in Savannah. SCAD's economic impact, it has been tremendous in this community. They're always giving back and giving buildings and coming in to assist, just as our other universities. And you know, we never mentioned the technical, I did mention them, but they are our universities. Savannah State, Armstrong State, Savannah Tech and they are just as involved in the progress that we have. The arts are a big reason why people move here to Savannah, why businesses locate here. They look at what we are doing in that area, what kind of jobs are here, and not only that, they look at our schools. It is part of the reason the city this year will contribute more than $750,000 to local art organizations. That's where you see, when you see all of the programs that are put on by the city. We are nearing the end of the design phase of a new $20 million cultural arts center in Savannah. As long when the plan is completed. We want all of you to come out to put shovels in the ground because it will do job creation. It will be located on Oglethorpe Avenue and Montgomery Street and will provide much needed performance, practice, classroom, and gallery space. It will become the new focus of art, the arts in Savannah. Number three, improve our infrastructure. We're going to build in 2014. We're going to start road projects that will replace, re remake the President Street extension and improve the Waters Avenue corridor streetscape with new sidewalks, crosswalks, and lightings. Mary, they are, we are hearing you in the second district. We will finish the $100 million uh, gardens, affordable housing community, which has already transformed Pennsylvania Avenue corridor. And we will prepare for the $17 million expansion of our garbage landfill 
and $25 million uh, dollar improvement to our President Street project. Mary Ellen, we didn't forget about you. For we still have not only the Habersham era, street area with all of the drainage problems and Mary, the Baldwin Park area. For these have long been on our books and we must move with them because those are commitments that were made. We will prepare to do whatever we can. Nothing is more important for economic development than taking good care of our roads, bridges, pipes, and water supplies. Now I do want you to know that there will be projects throughout the entire uh, city of Savannah. Those are the ones that I'm highlighting today. But I know Tony is going to say, you didn't mention the 6th <laughs> District. Van is going to tell me what you got some in the 1st District. John Hall, I've talked about projects in your area. Estella Shabazz, your area twists and mix with so many other people. But it's important that the council members that are carrying your story know that we are listening to them and we are working together. Number three improve our infrastructure. Did I do that one? Yes, I did. Number four, improve public safety. When Stephanie Cutter, the city manager, approached us last summer and said there were going to be some changes in the police department, she warned us that it was going to be a long and difficult journey, and she was correct. She felt strongly that we could never truly focus on making our community safer until we uncovered all of the problems that were holding our police department back. She made a commitment at that time to leave no stone unturned. Turning over those stones has been a painful process, but is absolutely critical for the future of our police force. 99% of our officers are brave, hardworking, honorable public servants. And they have continued to do the tough jobs that they have to protect us. Until we get rid of those that disgrace the badge, then we must continue what we're doing. We honor our police department. The people complaining about current efforts to clean up Metro, are those who are even threatened by change, those seeking power during this transition, or those who are attempting to make money off of this process. Pay them no attention. They will not distract us. There are some who have urged us to stop this process and initiate a search for a new police chief. The city manager did not choose this route because she felt every effort to focus on the police department's future would fail until we clean up what was there. We must do that. We are never, we are nearing the end of this process. Thank the Lord. Now, the city manager will begin trans uh, transitioning our focus to the to recruitment of a police chief. And I believe strongly that she has given, she has taken the proper course. It is her decision of when this process will begin. The goal of the city manager and the chief, and where is Chief Talbert? Right there, straight ahead. Straight ahead, chief, please stand. And Terry. Terry Enoch 
and all of the command officers. for standing and moving. Y'all, all of you, with you, your command staff, and all of the officers, y'all have done a tremendous job. Don't give up, because everything is going to be all right. Our city, our, the goal of the city manager and, and our police chief is to make our police department a model of integrity. Our citizens demand this. And the his, 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 his heroes on our force <laughs> has put their lives on the line every day and they deserve that. It is to their credit that despite all that we have gone through, the Metro jurisdiction last year had the second lowest crime rate in the past four decades. And I credit. You know, you get all kind of numbers there thrown out there in this council look for hard numbers. I credit Treef Talbert and her staff who have done all they could ever ask to make this go away, but still to protect our residents. <laughs> Chief Talbert had made changes that are long overdue. She has prioritized equipment and techno technologies needs. She has met with the entire police force to gain their input on needed changes. She has placed police resources where they belong, on the streets and in the precincts. But of course, police is just one part of public safety. To truly make our community safer, we need a cultural shift. We need more jobs, better education, parents raising our kids the right way. Together we must work to drive down our poverty rates. We must not forever be stuck at 25%. No way in, the in a community as great as Savannah should we have 30 homicides every single year. We can change this, but it has to be with your help, my residents. One in four people living in poverty is our problem. It is not the council problem. It is our problem. All, it's all of our problem. And we must all be a part of the solution. I have a saying that it is not about the I. Clifford Hardwick used to say, but it is about the we. I changed it, but it is about us a united Savannah, only a united Savannah can create a greater Savannah. Work with this council to make Savannah great in 2014. We cannot do it without you. If we fail, all of us fail because all of us make up our city, Savannah, Georgia. Thank you for coming out. But most of all, thank you for being supportive of us. We realize that there are times that you may not agree with everything that, we're uh, that we do. But we have a listening ear. And we will always be there for you 
Tell us when we are doing something wrong, but you don't have to do it in the paper. You can call us and let us know. Tell us when we need to do, but also let us know when we are doing something right. Because we need encouragement just like everybody else. I am just so proud, and I say my city, but it's really our city, for we are a family. We are a family. At times, we will fight each other. But just like any other family, we still come back and sit to the table, at grandmama's table, and we eat and have supper, and we still come together. We love you, Savannah. For you are truly the hostess city of the South. Yes, ma'am. Let me recognize Alderman Tom Bordeaux. Oh, where is he? He don't want me to call his name. He turned his head. He turned around. <laughs> I have another young, uh, uh, oh Lord. <laughs> Y'all, I'm just going to tell you. There are two people in this, in this building, you know, and I'm taking a, pers a personal privilege. Did he walk out? No. Okay. You know, my strength comes from others, and it comes from people, but my, all, my strength also comes from one person. I don't know why he tried to tell me what I can and cannot do, but I love him dearly. That's my son standing over there in the corner. But there is another person that is here, and he's always by my side and that is Alon Alonzo Adams. I have to recognize him. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we will adjourn for the evening. Thank you very much for coming. And I can tell you, no, we have not had the town hall meetings, but we've been working very hard. I want to set a date here tonight, whether we have anything to discuss or not. So I want one of the councils to pull out the schedule, give me a date, and that will give you an opportunity to prepare. Hopefully next month is very busy, but in April. If I'm not here, that is why we have leadership. Is going to give me a date? Tuesday. Give me a Tuesday. All right, Diane, you know, you, you keep up with our stuff. Uh, the, the what? The 1st, the 8th, the 15th, the 15th 22nd, the 22nd. What about the 15th? Tax day. <laughs> tax day. What about the week after tax day? 22nd. The 22nd. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Will you come back again? And that night will be your night. Thank you very much and have a nice evening.